Yep. Hi, everybody. It's Karen Harold, and I am going to show you how to create a collaborate session and how you and your students can get into that session for either live um, uh, for either a live session uh, where you might be holding um, regular class hours or office hours, or you can also use that same session to record any lecture that you want to do that you might want to put out on Blackboard so the students can view. So first thing we're going to do is one second here. OK, you can see this window. And this window um, um, shows that you are sharing um, uh, your screen right now. So um, how I'm going to show this to you, it's going to be a little bit of a strange. It's, it's going to be strange just because of the fact of that, because I am sharing with you. It is going to be a little hard for me to show how to share with you. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up another um, tab right here. I'm going to log in with a different user. I'm going to get you to a different view so I can show you all of the steps. Just bear with me here for a minute. OK, OK. So what I'm going to show you now is how to, how to get in a session with your students from start to finish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click into my course. And that's where you're going to be. You're going to need to be in your course. What we're going to do is we're going to create a menu item that your students can get into Blackboard Collaborate, and you can use the same menu item. Like everything else in Blackboard, there are some things that you can find up here in the menu, and you can find the same things down under Control Panel. Well, the same thing goes with Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. You can find it down in the Control Panel, but we're going to create a, a, a menu item up top so your students can get to it. So first thing you want to do is go to the plus sign, Tool Link. You want to find. Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and choose it. Then you want to name the, the title the same. You want to make it available to users and you want to click Submit. What this does is it puts this link right here in your menu. From here on in, you can use this link and your students can use this link to access Blackboard Collaborate. So whether it's you or whether it's your student, you click on this link, and it will open you up to this window. Here is your course room right here. This is a room that you and your students can hop in at any time by clicking on the three buttons, the three dots over here to the right. You can also create a session for future um, for future meeting times. They both do the same thing. Whether you create a session or whether you join the course room, you're going to have the same experience. The only difference is, is one you can create for future and one you can hop in right now. What I'm going to suggest you to do is set up times with your students to hop in the course room at either the same time you are holding your class right now. So if you're meeting on Mondays from 8 to 10, you know, let your students know to jump into the course room from 8 to 10 on Mondays. Or if you have to vary that a little because of schedules, that's fine. But make it clear to your students when you want them to join the, uh, jump into the course room, and you can all do that at the same time. So all the student would have to do right here at this point is click on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And then you and the student, you can click on the same link, but you both go to the triple dot to the right, and you click on Join Course Room. You're going to see right here that it's going to detect your microphone and or your webcam if you are using a webcam with a built-in microphone. 
There's a lot of options here, which I'm going to go over with you, and I'm going to suggest the easiest option. So for right now, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to allow the webcam. I'm going to turn it off. And hang tight, I'm logging in right now. Okay. A lot of these tutorials pop up. Just knock them off the screen. They're gonna, they will constantly pop up. So what you're going to see now is what happens when you first join the room, you're gonna see that it's gonna try to auto detect whatever hardware you have. If you have a webcam with a built-in microphone, it will detect that. If you have built-in webcam and microphone in your laptop, it's going to detect that. If you have a headset with a microphone attached plugged in to your USB port, it will detect that too. It's going to detect whatever you're using and you're going to accept it, but that's not what turns your audio and your video on and off. These buttons down here will turn your audio and your video on and off. If I click here, this will turn dark green, which will tell me I'm sharing my audio. If I click here, this will turn dark blue, which shows I'm sharing my video. I'm not clicking on them right now because I have two different sessions going, and I don't want to mess up the session that you're hearing me with, so I'm not going to click on them. But this is how you turn it on and off right here. Now, to make it simple, if you don't have a webcam or a microphone, you can come to the menu up here, and the students have the same option. You can click on use your phone for audio and it gives you a dial in number with a pin. This number and pin um, is, is for everyone in the course, in the, in the room to use and your numbers will always be anonymous. No one will ever be able to see each other's number. So if you're just looking at the bare minimum to be able to connect with your students that they can hear you and that, that they can hear you and that you, know, you can hear them if you're allowing audio, you can use the dial in here with a cell phone. If you dial in with the cell phone, this down here turns into a phone, like an old landline looking phone, like right, you see right here. You will see this icon down here instead of the actual microphone. So I guess to make things simple, and as far as not having to deal with too much technology, maybe not worry about the webcam, um, I would suggest if you don't have a headset with a built-in mic on it, um, use your phone dial in. If you want to use the webcam with the built-in uh, mic, feel free. That's what I'm using right now. I just have the video off right now. I have the webcam off. So those are your audio options. And you need to make sure before you start recording your session that this is on. So you are recording audio as well as video. So on this, once again, this menu up here, all this is giving you is your dial-in number and pin, and here is your start, stop, recording button. This works as a toggle switch. Clicking it starts it, clicking it stops it. It is not a pause, it is a stop. If you stop your recording, it will automatically start rendering. So don't think you can stop recording and run to the bathroom or get a cup of coffee and come back and turn it on back on because in actuality, you will be you will be starting a brand new recording, um, L, which also brings up the you know fact that you know you might want to chunk your recordings. You might not want to do an hour long recording. Chunk it into smaller pieces. Maybe do you know six ten minute recordings so your students aren't sitting there watching an hour long recording. Um, but the students can pause. When it comes back, they do have the ability to pause. So um, you don't have the ability to pause. They do when they get the recording. So once again, this menu is your start, stop recording, and your dial-in. That's the left menu. The right side menu here is where all the meat and potatoes are. Um, what you will, what you have down here is your chat box, your attendee list, and your share content button. Your first button here is your chat, is what you're chatting right now with all your questions that you're putting through. If you click on everyone, and once again, these tutorials keep popping up, just close them down. When you click on everyone, 
this is where you will be able to chat with your students. One thing that is really important when you're online is you need to get control of the audio or the conversation in your classroom. So what we're doing right now is first it was Mike, then it was Melissa, then it was myself. We were doing the presentation. Deanne is answering all the questions on the chat. So we're able to keep the audio down and, and, and not get interrupted with questions. We've directed it to the chat. You can do the same with your students. You can mute them all, and you can just have them ask their questions in chat, and you can answer them. Or if you're going to allow them to have audio, you see this little icon down here, you can have them raise their hand. And when they do, you can acknowledge them and ask them what their question is, and, and you can answer them. However you want to handle it, but you need to get control, otherwise you're going to be hearing noises and doorbells and dogs barking and everybody's going to be talking at once and it could get a little crazy so find what's going to work for you and how you're going to control the audio in your classroom the second button here attendees here is where you will see a list of your attendees and all the students that are now joining you in your classroom if you look at the triple button up here here is where you have the option to mute all find that your audio is getting out of control you can come up here and you can mute just just mute everyone's microphone so you get control back of the classroom um, once again it's up here three buttons next to attendee the next button I'm going to show you is share content there are a lot of bells and whistles in here and in future we can go through all of them but for right now i think the goal is is for all of you to get on collaborate the simplest way and which is going to be the least frustrating for you and for your students so i'm going to show you the simple way to just um share your screen you're going to click on share application screen entire screen then you're going to have the option to select screen entire screen now this i'm on firefox right now i have to be on firefox right now because our actual recording that we're doing with you is on chrome you will see a different look in chrome you will click on share application screen then you will have a box up here that says share entire screen and you will say yes i'm just alerting you that the look is different between firefox and chrome so for right now, I'm going to select my entire screen and I'm going to say allow. You're going to see this tunnel. This tunnel is just telling you that you are sharing your complete screen, your complete computer with, with your students. So once you see this tunnel pop up, pop up, you will know that you are sharing everything. Um, once this tunnel pops up, you can come up here and you can start your recording. And then you can just go about your screen and share everything that you want to share with them. One piece of advice, you want to make sure you have everything up that you're going to be sharing so you're not fumbling. If you're, if, if you're going to be sharing websites with them, make sure you have them open up in your tabs up here. If you're going to be sharing any applications, make sure you have them open and minimized uh, at the bottom of your screen down here. Just have everything ready so you can quickly go through through everything you need to go through. Now, I'm going to flip here and I'm going to take you back to the other session for a minute. Okay. I'm back into the session that you joined. So you can see here what I'm talking about as far as having everything ready to go. I am now showing you the sharing screen. If I wanted to share my PowerPoint with you, I simply open it up. I can start it and I can stop it. If there's some place on the web that you wanna take your students, I can go to um, any website. Um, here's Microsoft Office. I mean, here is our Academy website. You can see that I'm maneuvering through 
my screen just as if I was standing up in front of the class or if I was just going through this at home. I can actually go back into my Blackboard course just like Melissa was in. Maybe you might want to go over the syllabus and um, syllabus and I just lost you there. Sorry, hold on. It logged me out. Okay. Oh well, that logged me out. Sorry about that. It logged me out. Okay. I'm not going to worry about it. what. Yeah, timed out. I think I timed out. So you can go through. You can go through any of your tabs or any anything that you have open, and you can share that with them. That is the simplest way to do this. Share application screen. You'll get a box here that says click on entire screen. You'll see your tunnel. You'll start your recording, and then you'll just go through business as usual. Trying to think here, anything else? There's also a whiteboard. You can share your, pardon? Oh, the download checkbox. Okay. Um, one thing that um, I want to show you, it's going to make me log back in. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. In order to make this work, there's so many windows that I have to have open. I'm getting kicked out of things. Um, okay, one thing that I wanted to show you, if I go back to the Blackboard Collaborate Ultralink, before you enter your classroom, there is an option here that allows you, under settings, the three dots, under edit settings, there is an option here. Hold on, I'm getting there that allows you to record to um, download your recordings right here. I suggest that you go into your settings before you enter your classroom and you check that. That gives you the ability to take these recordings out of Collaborate if you ever need to use them again. You might want to download them and use them, put them up to YouTube for a reason. You might want to download them and um, uh, you know use them elsewhere. But if you don't check this, um, the only way to get these out of collaborate would be to copy the link, but this allows you to download the whole recording. So I just want you to be aware that that's there. And that is, once again, it's before you enter your classroom in the triple dot edit settings. So I'm going to go back to our screen here. Once again, we have chat. We have attendees and we have share content and I took you in the easiest way with sharing the application or the screen. I'm going to shut this down now. You can see here this is stop sharing. I'm going to shut down the sharing of the screen and I'm going to show you some other options. I can also click on share blank whiteboard. This opens up a whiteboard. It has the basic functions, text, pencil, shapes, So it has basic functions for you to use um, on the primary blank whiteboard. And once again, if I want to stop sharing, I can stop sharing there. This share files, you can share a PowerPoint this way. What that does is it turns it into static images and it allows you to write on them. It opens them up on the whiteboard. You can pull in a PDF or you can pull in an image through here. Under the share files, those are your only three options, and it turns them into static images so you can write on them. So if you're sharing files, that's your choice. I'm suggesting, because we're trying to get to the simplest, easiest way here for you to feel comfortable opening everything up you need to share and going through share application screen, clicking on your screen, clicking share, and now everything is available that's on your computer. You can use whatever you want in here, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the simplest way to get this done right now with the little bit amount of time that we have. Um, I'm just trying to think here. Can you guys think of anything else? I'm just talking to my uh, colleagues, Melissa and Deanne. Maybe if you can repeat the steps to get in one more time. The steps to get in one more time. Just to start. Okay. Okay, 
And just so you all know, I put together like a two and a half minute video that is out on our Academy website that will show you, it just shows you exactly how to get into, um, how to get into uh, Collaborate and exactly what I'm showing you now, okay? I'm gonna, we do have a video out there on the website. Um, so what you're gonna do, let's start from scratch, is you're creating a link in your menu so you and the students can get to your virtual room. You click on this link, this will get you to this window. You and your students just have to go to the three dots and click on join room. And once you're in the room, once you join the room, I can't click on that because I'm already in there. Once you click on it, you will go to here. And I'm going to shut down the sharing again. You will go to here and you're going to just have a blank screen. You then have to go to your share button here to decide what you're going to share. I'm suggesting click on the screen option, click the box, click the share. You are now sharing everything on your computer. The only thing you have left to do here is start and stop your record, start your recording if you want to record, and then it's business as usual, going through your computer and going through your tabs and your applications. Can you show where the recording? Yes, I'm getting there right now. So once you've done this and you've you've made it now, and, and also let me let me show you one other thing. If you just want to come in here to record and you don't want students in here, you're going to have to lock the room because students can pop into here anytime they want, and they and you don't want them you don't want them popping in um, when you're recording. So when you record lecture, it's the same as what I'm doing right now. But the only extra step you have to do, you see here that I am in the Blackboard Collaborate tab. Blackboard Collaborate always opens in an external in another tab, so you can go back to your Blackboard shell if you need to. Here's the Collaborate, here's the shell. So if I start the session and I don't want any students hopping in here, but I want to do lecture capture, I want to go back to my shell. And I can't click here because I don't want to lock anybody out right now. But if you click right here where it says unlocked, it will then lock the room. So your room will be locked and no students will be able to hop in there. You have to remember that this room, this course room right here, is open all the time. And, and so students can hop in. They can even hop in and use it on their own if they want. So if you want to record, you're going to get to this spot here where you're ready to record, and you're going to go back to your tab, and you're going to double click on the word unlocked, and it's going to change it to locked. Now, when you're done recording, you need to make sure that you unlock this so your students can get in here if they need to use it. So that's how you, that, that would be the difference between synchronous, you know, and asynchronous, whether you're live or whether you're recording. I'm just suggesting you lock the room when you record and there's no students in there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you where to find the recordings. This menu right here, this gives you the toggle between sessions and recordings. We are in sessions right now. I'm going to toggle to recordings. Here is where you will find all of your recordings. Here is where your students will find all of your recordings. Um, these are all recordings that I made that are now on, on uh, the website on for for the fact that we're locked down for the next how many weeks. Um, if you look at all of these recordings, they also have options. There's menu options here, okay? If I look over here and I click on the triple button, you can see that now, now the students have this as well, but they don't have, once again, they don't have all these options. They just have the watch now. That's all they have. So you have the option here to watch it now. You have the option here to download it, and you can see when I when I made you select that checkbox to download it to get it offline, I can click on download, and it will turn it into right down here. You can see it's an MP4. If I open it in the folder, there is my collaborate recording. It is now. It took all of three seconds to download. You now have the MP4 externally, so you can use it again. You have the option to edit the name. Okay. This is what you're editing right here. This half 
always keeps your course name so you know what course it came from. So this will always pull your course name. If it's SOCH 101, 001, or whatever, it will keep it. This is what you are editing, the other half on the other side of the slash, so you can name your recording. You have an uh, obviously option to delete it. Then a real nice option is you have an option to copy the link. So if you create this and you want to share it in all four sections, you can take this link, if I click copy, it puts it right on the clipboard. Now, just pretend I'm going into another section of your course. I'm going to go into my learning modules. Just pretend I'm in week one. I'm going to, um, I can either put it in an item or I can put it in an announcement, however you want to get it to your students. But I'm just going to put it in an item right now, but you can do an announcement too. I can really take that link and I can put it in here obviously with some verbiage to watch it. I can create the link. I want to open it in a new window. I can say insert. Now I've just put that link to that video in another section. So I can take, let me get back down here. I'm going to go back into collaborate, go back into recordings. So I can take this copy link here and I can share this video anywhere I want to share it without having to do, it, to, to do anything else with it. Um, a, a lot quicker, easier way to share with other sections than downloading it, taking it out of here, and, and putting it in another section. That download feature is nice if you're going to host a bunch of videos in YouTube and you want to put it up to YouTube. But you can simply just copy this link and share it in other courses. Um, Trying to think what else, can you ladies think of anything else I should have to cover on here? I guess now would be the time. De Deanne is, is monitoring questions. Um, I know we covered a lot here today. Um, we're just as frantic as you are trying to get all of these materials out and trying to get all of this done and shared with you. Um, your best, I would say, the best place to go would be the Academy, if you go to our planning for a rapid transition online instruction, everything you need is here. There's BB Tech support, here's online instruction support form. There is all kinds of, we've been putting together videos and um, white papers right here. Here's the live lecture synchronous. Everything we covered today is in here. Um, um, Pre-recorded lecture, asynchronous, I was talking about everything I was talking about recording is in here. I know it's a lot. I know you're feeling overwhelmed, and um, but there's a lot of, there's a wealth of information here on our Academy site, and I, I encourage you to go here and look at it. Um, be assured, too, that we are all going to be online like 12 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of our natural lives <laughs> until we um until we come back here to school all 11 of us in the academy and we will be fielding forms we will be fielding questions we will even call you if you want us to call there's there's an option i'm going to pull up the support form here's the support form you know um if if you want to put your phone number on here we will call you but here is the form that you will you know if you're having issues Submit it, and we will get back to you that day. Within 24 hours, we, are, we will all be working online, and we'll get back to you um, just to keep you afloat. So um, right now, unless you have any other questions, I think that's about it. But if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box for Deanne so she can tell me what you want me to answer. I just want to make sure we're here tomorrow. Yes. We are here tomorrow. We are doing a, we just added a morning face-to-face -face collaborate session. I believe it's 9 to 11. Right, but is it 9 to 11, I believe? I believe. Everything we just ran through, I will be doing face-to-face. -face. Melissa will be here doing testing. Yes, 1 to 3 is virtual though, right? Or is it not? Or is it face-to-face? -face? Okay, we have two face-to-face -face sessions tomorrow going through exactly what we just did tonight, starting with Mike, ending with me. 
Um, 9 to 11 and 1 to 3? Mm -hmm. 1 to 3. Everybody has to be out of here by 4.30 tomorrow, so tomorrow will be our last day here. But please feel free to come in and, uh, to either one of the sessions from 9 to 11 or 1 to 3, and we will go through this face-to-face -face again. Any other questions, Dee? No. Okay. Um, well, thank you all for coming. Um, like I said, um, uh, be assured we're here to help you and um, fill out the form if you need any further help, and we will get back to you. Uh, stay safe, and I hope you all have a good evening.